How's it going guys? It's Poetry Stud and welcome to Waking the Tiger in Hearts of Iron 4. Paradox was nice enough to give me a review copy for the new expansion coming to Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, it'll be releasing on the 8th and we're going to be playing it until then and after that. Um, Waking the Tiger is focused on China and I'm just going to go ahead and read the feature list off of the page on uh, ParadoxPlaza.com uh, so that you guys get it straight from the source, what is sort of added. Uh, so it adds national focus trees for China, uh, for all the Chinese miners and majors, um, uh, not major, you know what I mean, um, the bigger countries and the smaller countries. It adds new focus trees for Germany and Japan, sort of like modifies those focus trees. Uh, it also adds chains of command and general traits and sort of fleshes out on that mechanic. It adds decisions and like more stuff to do with political power and it also has other stuff like scavenging equipment from the battlefield using volunteer air cores and other things, which I think will be fun to play out. I'm going to go ahead and close that chrome window I have open now so we can just hop right in. But that gives you sort of an idea of what we're going to be doing. And uh, and yeah, we are today. I, I actually did open up the game already just to like look at some stuff. I was sort of thinking about who we wanted to play Um in this new thing you can see uh they have added a lot since the the game first released because obviously there's the majors but then like they've added bleh, they've added now like a ton of miners uh you can see from all the other dlc and now from this one we have china um meaning like you know nationalist china or whatever uh, so we have china we have communist china we have manchukuo um guangxi click yunnan Shang, Shang, Shangxi? I don't know if it's Shangxi or Shanxi. Um, Shanxi? I'm not sure. And Shibe Sanma. Uh, I don't know how the X is pronounced in Chinese, and I know very little about Chinese as a language. So, uh, I'm sure I butchered all those pronunciations. You'll have to forgive me. <laughs> uh, and Xinjiang as well. So they've added a lot. Um, we're going to go ahead and choose China here. I was thinking about it. You know, obviously, Communist China is really interesting. Um, they have a lot of uh, cool mechanics that are sort of unique to them. Uh, but I figured that a lot of people are probably going to be doing that. Um, a lot of people are probably going to be doing the Communist China. Because that is, I think that is sort of like the most common one to see. Uh, the most interesting uh, in a lot of ways. But I don't think... Uh, I, I'd want to do something different. So instead, we're going to play as China, as the, like, you know, uh, main China, nationalist China. Um, and, yeah, so we start non-aligned. We are an authoritarian regime. We are uh, ruled by Chiang Kai-shek. Um, and, yeah, as, as China, we start with army corruption, which is just awful. Look at this. Division attack... 50% down. Division defense, 50% down. Mobilization speed, 30% down. That's awful. Uh, consumer goods. So, uh, this is actually one thing they've added. I think this is maybe in the free patch. I'm not sure, though, so don't count me on that. Um, but they have not They have added inflation as a mechanic to the game, and I don't know how that works yet. And there's also the Nine Power Treaty, um, which is dealing with, like, the European powers, I believe. <laughs> Uh, we also start with these three things. We have the, or I think these are actually not, I think these are just the, these aren't three things that we start with. These are like uh, main options or main paths. Um, I, I'm sure I will try Communist Shine at some point in time. In fact, I might do like a stream, uh, probably, well, so I'm recording this on Saturday on the 3rd. Uh, the embargo lifts tomorrow on the 4th, not a whole bunch of time. Uh, maybe tomorrow night, if you're watching this in the morning on Sunday, uh, or like afternoon if you're in Europe, uh, I may stream later tonight, um, later Sunday, the 4th, um, as Communist China. Um, there's also, like, I mean, there's all these miners. I don't really think, like, I think, yeah, these ones are sort of just copying copies from each other. Manchukuo is different, though. They're the one that is a um, the puppet of Japan. That could be really interesting to play as. There's also a way, though, to do this and... I think that uh, in the email I got from Paradox uh, with the code, they said that I think there's like a path you can go as Manchukuo to try and like throw off Japan as your ruler, you know, get rid of them and also take over China. But apparently it's like actually impossible to beat right now in like numerically impossible to beat in this review patch uh, and it will be fixed before the release. But apparently that is something 
Uh, and maybe it'd be fun just to try to see if we can break it. But uh, anyways, so the Guangxi Click, uh, Yunnan, Shangxi, and Shibe Sanma, they all have the same uh, the same things, uh, which makes sense. I didn't expect them to have completely unique things for everything. But uh, there's also Xinqing as well, which also has uh, this generic. Uh, it's not generic. It's a new, it's a Chinese one, but the Chinese generic one. But still, uh, it could be fun to do Manchukuo or Communist China, one of those two on stream tonight. Uh, probably, probably I would do Communist China. Um, but yeah, certainly there's a, there's quite a few nations to choose to play as. But we're going to be playing as China. Um, and I think part of the reason the other ones don't have main things is because they were they are they're peripheral. You know, they're not as they weren't as super um, they weren't as super. Uh, critical to the success of the uh, to the success of the um, or the, like the the industrial power of China so so they aren't really they don't have as much uh, unique stuff so yeah so so yeah Manchukuo and Communist China and China are the ones that are really I think going to be the interesting ones to play as uh, and we're going to be doing China we're going to be playing on regular difficulty I like how they've added the slider that is very easy to sort of grasp what the difference is going to be at each level we're gonna go Iron Man. We're gonna go historical AI focuses, and yeah. So here is our here is our starting. Well, we could look at that once we get in, honestly. But uh, but yeah, let's let's just go ahead and hop right in. Uh, Iron Man, Iron Man, China. I did this one just to test it out, but uh, didn't even do anything. I just looked at the tree. Oh, I think the volume's a little loud. I'm gonna lower that. Okay. But yeah, so again, I, I did, I don't know if I might not have mentioned this, but I did receive a copy, a review, this review copy from Paradox for free. So if that matters to you, keep that in mind. This is not a review or anything in any sense, but it is, you know, we're looking at it. If you think that I am, uh, if that matters to you, basically, then just, you know, consider yourself notified. Um, so here we are uh, as China. Our capital is Nanjing. Um, we have Beijing up here. That's our farthest north. Uh, we have Chongqing here. I think that's how you, I think that's how you would say that. Um, I again, I don't know. I don't speak Chinese, <laughs> so I'm gonna butcher all these names. I'm sure Shanghai is here. Um, so you're gonna for, uh, you're gonna have to forgive me for that. So uh, what is going on here at the start? Well, let's look at our national. Spirits. So you have German military advisors. Um, we have land doctrine research time down because of that. It's really good. The Nine Power Treaty, which doesn't have any effects. The Army Corruption, which we need to get rid of. The Ineffective Bureaucracy. Recruitable Population Factor minus 35%. Of course, we already have, like, we still have a ton of manpower, but still, we want to get rid of that. Incompetent Officers. Daily Command Power Gain Multiplier. And this is one thing that we have command power now. This is something I saw, but I don't actually know how it works. I have not. I have to be honest. I haven't been keeping up with the dev diaries as well as I should have been. But I believe that you can. Uh, I believe that when you have like fronts and stuff, you can spend command power to sort of like, um, like it says, you sort of boost one-time operations, uh, and and it will sort of help out there. I think it's like a sort of like a a bonus you can add at will or something. We will figure that out. Um, we have this big focus tree. I've looked through it a good bit now, just because I wanted to have some idea what's going on. But it's still pretty darn large. Like I think this might be the largest one that I've played as, at least. Um, I've never. I still haven't played all the the major powers before in this game. I actually, which ones haven't I played? I've played. I played Germany. I played Italy. I've played Britain. I've played France. I've played. I don't think I've, I've never played the Soviets. I don't think I've ever played the U.S. I don't think I've never played Japan. Definitely. So, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so let's just look through briefly. This is sort of like our political tree. This is like our army, uh, army thing. Um, and we definitely want to do this, you know, pretty early on. The army reform industry is actually not that big of a thing because I think a lot of the industry is actually in here uh so we the the foreign investors is something interesting i noticed this when i was looking through beforehand you actually get to odd add that yeah, add off map civilian factories so what i'm assuming that means is that that's representing like private investors um which it makes sense that the private investors they don't care if you lose more land if they are committed they're going to be sending you stuff you're going to have that economic power 
even if you lose all your country, you have one province left, you know. So that's kind of cool. It models that aspect. Uh, the fact that it's off map and not in other countries is nice too, because it means it's like private messers. It's not part of the public war effort or, or anything like that, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, so I really like that, but so they're not represented on the map at all. Um, reach out to France. You can reach out to the British. You can reach out to the Soviet Union. Mission to Germany. Mission to the U.S. Collaboration with the Japanese. So there's obviously a lot of choices here. Uh, we definitely don't want to do like collaboration with the Japanese because we're going to have to fight them at some point. That's kind of the point of this campaign is resistance against the Japanese. That's going to be the theme of this campaign. I'm pretty sure, at least. That's what you know I'm expecting. Um, and eventually the goal is to sort of get to this point, renegotiate the unequal treaties. Yeah. Um, huh. We'll see. But, uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of decisions here. So it looks like over here you have, like, uh, stuff with dealing with Tibet, Mongolia, Korea, and Japan. Um, so that'll be, like, late game, probably, once we have actually managed to fend off Japan more. But early on, you do have to sort of, uh, figure out who are you gonna align yourself with out of the major, major powers. Uh, because if you want to survive, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to do that. Um, and plus, it's, all this stuff is blocked off, you know? Um, I think it'd be interesting to maybe, like, do mission to the U.S. Um, basically, it looks like it sort of, they can support our war. And and that seems like it'd be interesting, at least. Uh, one thing to, me to mention is that we don't... It's not like we're limited to one of these. Actually, in fact, we could do Mission to Germany and Mission to the Soviet Union and Mission to the U.S. and either one of these. Uh, you can see they're not, like, mutually exclusive. It's just these two are mutually exclusive. These two are mutually exclusive. So that is totally something we could do. Um, so we'll just have to figure out which of these is better, like, out of these different lines here and here. Uh... In fact, I don't think it actually matters for the collaboration with the Japanese or the mission to the U.S. It, I don't think it matters at all, actually. You'll still be able to reach everything. It's just a... Oh, no, no. You won't be able to do modern submarines. That's okay. Um, yeah. And with this one, you, of course, won't be able to do, like, Burma Road without this. And we won't be able to do these without... Reach out to the, to the French. Um, huh. Huh. Three off map military factory. Huh. French military mission. Charles Ber Berger. French trail. Lido Road. Modern logistics. We'll see. We're, we're going to look through this part more in depth because um, uh, we'll probably. I don't know. It's going to be interesting for sure. We'll see because I, I don't know if we want to focus on this really we'll, we'll look through that more as we go this stuff is not really there's no really hard choices there same here uh during the three with the three principles of the people you get welfare democracy and nationalism you can get all three of those they're not mutually exclusive sort of just depends on which order you want to do them in so it's not like we're going to be really uh really blocked off by anything there but over here, one thing that I'm sort of interested in, this is one decision I, I would like to sort of maybe discuss right now on video, is nationalism. After you get nationalism, you can either basically go for the united front, or you can go for conquering the communists. And that's something interesting. Obviously, historically, the united front is what happened. You had the... You know, you had the United Front that was uh, the Communists and, and Nationalist China working together, putting aside their differences, basically putting the Civil War on hold so that um, you could survive against Japan together. Either way, you get to the whole stuff with Japan, but I, I don't know. I, I think I might try to go a little ahistorical there and try to eat the Communists um, and subjugate the warlords, like demand their subjugation... I feel like that would be better, <laughs> more fun. We'll see, we'll see. Um, it could also be fun to have the Chinese United Chinese Front and have them all be sort of like working under us, um, you know, or with us, beside us. We'll see, but let's go ahead and for now focus on our other stuff. Uh, we should choose our first one. 
I mean, I think that... I think that the... I think this one's pretty good to start getting to this point where we can do this stuff. It could also be good to do our industry. No, let's let's do this for now. Um, research slot available. Okay, what do we want to do for research? No new tabs have been added. Uh, it doesn't look like too much has been changed here. That's okay. Let's do this one. I well, we only had two research slots. That's that's one thing that is kind of. You know, we were starting out kind of weak there. We should definitely do this, I think. Just get up to speed, but maybe we'll wait. We don't even have support equipment. So we're obviously starting a little behind. We don't have any artillery. Mass Assault Doctrine is a good one. Um, I like Mass Assault Doctrine because of the extra manpower you get. Of course, you don't really... I don't even remember where it is. Did they change that? Maybe you don't get that anymore? Huh. Oh, there it is. Recruitable population. This will probably be the route we go, because infantry is what we're probably going to be using mostly. Um, certainly should be good. But uh, that's not super relevant right now. I'm not going to worry about Navy or Air, really, right now, either. We have at least some Air, some fighters um, researched. Doctrine is not as crucial right now. I think, for right now, all you really care about is this and this. Like, getting the basics knocked out. Uh, free civilian factories. We do have some free civilian factory stuff we can do. Uh, how many civilian factories do we have? We have 18, and we have a lot using consumer goods. Oh my god, the timer is already up. That's actually crazy. Uh, I was not expecting that. That was... Okay. Um, oh, wow. This is new. Yeah, this is the decisions. Okay, so I see. There's also this uh, stability thing as opposed to... Well, stability is also a thing. That's like national unity, I'm pretty sure. Um, but then there's also war support now. I don't, I don't actually know what the difference is at this point. So these are things we can actually use. These are decision decisions that we can spend political power on. Interesting. Okay, that's interesting. Huh. Promises of peace. No. Improve work conditions. Stability. Institute press censorship. Prospect for resources. Develop Shandong Baoshite. Baoshite? Baosh I don't know. Baoshite? I don't know. I don't know how to say that. But you can add production. For 60 days, civilian factory use 3. And then you add production of stuff. Okay. Army reform. You have to have more than 99 army experience. Complete the focus army reform. Interesting. Okay. Chinese power struggle. Take national leadership. All Chinese countries have access to this decision. To initiate the power struggle, countries trying to complete the political opposition of. That is not good. So this is like for other countries. <laughs> when they get enough power, they can basically demand that they be the ruler. <laughs> that seems seems brutal. Uh, okay, that's, that's really interesting. What I really was actually trying to look at, though, was this stuff here. So we have a civilian economy. Obviously, we can't go to the war economy. And it, uh, it does actually... I prefer to just wait and then go all at once. Hmm. We'll see. What do we got here? So we got Silent Workhorse, which is good. War support. Oh, yeah. This is the... We have to have this person in charge to get the... 
That seems pretty good. Uh, we'll probably have to put you in charge, Sung Mei Ling, First Lady, uh, to get the whole U.S. thing, I, I believe it was, right? To get the U.S., the mission to the U.S. Uh, and that would be good, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and get started here. I've, I've spent enough time looking at stuff. What do we what do we worry about for right now? I don't really know. I It's been so long since I've actually played this game that I don't know what I should prioritize anymore. <laughs> uh, I feel like we should... We should probably build inland where it's going to be a little safer. That's the idea anyways. Let's build another military factory and another civilian factory. You know, start... Doing that a little bit. Infrastructure? Our infrastructure is not terrible, but it's also not great. Uh, it'd be good to get, like, at least the coastal stuff built up a little more. What about resources? Hold on, let me move my, my screen a little bit. There we go. I, uh... Resource-wise, we have steel, we have... We have a good bit of steel, we got a little bit of tungsten. Uh, Guangxi Click actually has so much resources, so that is going to be probably one priority for us is to take them over one way or another basic infantry equipment oh that's awesome that you can actually do that wow that's a really good feature that you can actually have one line and just have oh that's awesome <laughs> let's go ahead and uh i really think that getting just more and more military equipment is probably good because we don't have anything else that we can even do really um yeah so just Honestly, just keep doing that for now. I'm not looking great for this. Deficit. Huh. We have a deficit in steel. Are we not extracted? We're exporting so much of it. Jeez. Because of our trade rules. Uh, Jeez, free trade is brutal. I forgot about that. Limited exports is honestly probably something I should do because we need we need those resources for ourselves. Um, huh. Let's go up to speed three for now. I'm not gonna go speed five or anything like that. Um, because here's the thing. I I, I want to start organizing our army. Um, while time is going by, but I don't really have any idea at all like what we should focus on defense defensive wise. Like where should our lines be? Obviously with Japan. But, like, do we need troops on the Guangxi click line? Is there any way they can possibly side against us? Um, like, I want to I, I want to be cautious in that regard. I don't want to, like, assume that they're not going to be able to declare war on us. I, I really have no idea what I'm walking into, basically. Uh, okay, so we have Sanjiao Juns, which are... No, Juan Tuans. These guys are... Let's go ahead and look at... Uh... So these guys are, like, colonial, like, military police sort of, sort of ones. Yeah, these are, like, much simpler. These ones are... Okay, yeah, that sounds good. So, here's what I normally do, is I just take everything, and, uh... Yeah, shift... Am I crazy? How do you do the... Control alt click to send a ping to allies. How do you do the uh See I haven't played in so long that I don't even remember how to do the <laughs> This is terrible. I don't even remember how to do like the uh strategic redeployment. I actually I have played I played Hearts of Iron 3 fairly recently, and I think I'm actually still like in Hearts of Iron 3 mode. Is it alt No that's battle play? I don't know. Oh my god, am I really that out of it? <laughs> well, uh that's something that's interesting. That I'm not out of it. Kind of hard to believe, even. So here, we can create an army. And we can have army groups. Huh, okay. So essentially what I'm thinking is, I want to come in here and basically... Huh. I'm basically just trying to group everything together so that I can... I basically want to just start grouping... Be, 
grouping units together. Huh, yeah. So I actually, let's see. Unassign units. I want to unassign 28 units. You guys come over to Shanghai, I suppose. Huh. Yeah. I don't know if this is even the right way to approach it necessarily, but we'll see. Cool. Uh, well, no, I'll tell you what. I think we are going to actually... Uh, I think I am going to... Oh, hey, yeah, we should... Any additional things should actually go to convoys. Honestly. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up this episode here. I know we haven't done hardly anything. We've got barely a month in. Uh, but that's okay. We have sort of been talking about our options, talking about the expansion itself, and uh, and that's good. So we'll come back next episode and continue onwards, and really we'll probably go up to speed 5 at that point uh, sometime next episode and get going towards the war. So thank you guys for watching. Please go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.